Welcome back, Sons of Adam and Daughters of Eve. This is David Reed's Narnia, and we are reading The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. This is chapter eight. Now, before we get started, in chapter seven, the kids have found their way into Narnia, have got to the beaver's house, and they've just finished dinner. Chapter eight is called, What Happened After Dinner? And now, said Lucy, please do tell us what happened to Mr. Tumnus. Ah, that's bad, said Mr. Beaver, shaking his head. That's a very bad business. There is no doubt she was taken by the police. I got that from a bird who saw it done. But where has he been taken to, asked Lucy. Well, they were heading northwards when they were last seen, and we all know what that means. No, we don't, said Susan. Mr. Beaver shook his head in a very gloomy fashion. I'm afraid it means they were taking him to her house, he said. But what will they do to him, Mr. Beaver, gasped Lucy. Well, said Mr. Beaver, you can't exactly say for sure. There's not many taken there that ever comes out of Statues, all full of statues, they say it is in the courtyard and up the stairs and in the hall, people she's turned, he paused and he shuddered, turned into stone. But Mr. Beaver, said Lucy, we can't, I mean, we must do something to save him. It's too dreadful and it's all on my account. Oh, I don't doubt you save him if you could, dearie, said Mrs. Beaver, but you've no chance of getting into that house against her will and ever coming out alive. Couldn't we have some sort of stratagem, said Peter? I mean, couldn't we dress up as something or pretend to be, oh, peddlers or anything, or watch until she's gone out? Oh, oh, hang it all, there must be some way. This fawn saved my sister at his own risk, Mr. Beaver. We can't just leave him to be, to, to have that done to him. Well, it's no good, son of Adam, said Mr. Beaver. No good you're trying, of all people. But now that Aslan's on the move. Oh yes, tell us about Aslan, says several voices all at once. For once again, that strange feeling like the first signs of spring, like good news had come over them. Who is Aslan? asked Susan. Aslan, said Mr. Beaver. Why, don't you know? He is the king. He's the lord of the whole wood. But not often here, you understand. Never in my time or my father's time. But the word is reaches that he has come back. He is now in Narnia at this moment. He'll settle this white queen, all right. It's not you, but he that'll save Mr. Tumnus. She won't turn him into stone too, said Edmund. Oh Lord, love you, son of Adam. What a simple thing to say, answered Mr. Beaver with a great laugh. Turn him into stone. If she can stand on her two feet and look him in the face, it'll be the most she can do and more than I expect of her. No, no, he'll put things all right. As it says in the old rhyme, at the sound of his roar, sorrows will be no more. When he bears his teeth, winter meets its death. And when he shakes his mane, we shall have spring again. You'll understand when you see him. But shall we see him? asked Susan. Why, daughter of Eve, that's what I brought you here for. I'm to lead you to where you shall meet him, said Mr. Beaver. Is he a man, said Lucy. Aslan a man, said Mr. Beaver sternly. Certainly not. I'll tell you, he is the king of the wood and the son of the great emperor beyond the sea. Don't you know who the king of beast is? Aslan is a lion. Oh, said Susan, I thought he was a man. Is he quite safe? I shall feel rather nervous meeting a lion. Oh, that you will, dearie. And no mistake, said Mrs. Beaver. If there's anyone who can appear before Aslan without his knees knocking, they'll be either braver than most or just silly. Then he isn't safe, said Lucy. Safe, said Mr. Beaver. Don't you hear what Mrs. Beaver's telling you? Who said anything about safe? Of course he isn't safe. But he's good. He's the king, I tell you. I'm longing to see him, said Peter, even if I do feel frightened when it comes to the point. 
That's right, son of Adam, said Mr. Beaver, bringing his paw down on the table with a crash and made all the cups and saucers rattle. And so you shall. Word has been sent for you to meet him tomorrow, if you can, at the stone table. Where's that, asked Lucy. Well, I'll show you, said Mr. Beaver. It's down the river a good way from here. I'll take you to it. But meanwhile, what about poor Mr. Tumnus, said Lucy. Well, the quickest way you can help him is to go and to meet Aslan, said Mr. Beaver. Once he's with us, we can begin doing things. Not that we don't need you too, for that's another of the old rhymes. When Adam's flesh and Adam's bone sits at Caraparavel on throne, the evil time will be over and done. So things must be drawn to an end now that he's come and you've come. We've heard Aslan coming into these parts before, long ago. Nobody can say when, but there's never been any of your race here before. That's what I don't understand, Mr. Beaver, said Peter. I mean, isn't the witch human herself? Oh, she'd like us to believe it, said Mr. Beaver. And it's on that that she bases her claim to be queen. But she's no daughter of Eve. She comes of your father Adam's, your Mr. Beaver bow, your father Adam's first wife, her they call Lilith and she was one of the djinn. That's what she comes from on one side. And on the other side, she comes of the giants. No, no, there isn't a real drop of human blood in the witch. That's why she's bad through and through, Mr. Beaver, said Mrs. Beaver. True enough, Mrs. Beaver, he replied. There may be two views about humans, meaning no offense to present company. There's no two views about things that look human and aren't. Well, I've known some good dwarfs, said Mrs. Beaver. So have I, now that you've come to speak of it, said her husband. But precious few, and they were the ones least like men in general. Take my advice. When you meet anything that's going to be human and isn't yet, or used to be human and isn't anymore, or ought to be human and isn't, you keep your eyes open and you fill for your hatchet. And that's why the White Witch is always on the lookout for any humans in Narnia. She's been watching for you this many a year. And if she knew you four were here, she'd be more dangerous still. What's that to do with it? Asked Peter. Because of another prophecy, said Mr. Beaver. Down at Caraparavel, there's a castle on the sea coast down at the mouth of this river, which ought to be the capital of the whole country, all as as it should be. Down at Caraparavel, there are four thrones, and it's a saying in Narnia, time out of time, that when two sons of Adam and two daughters of Eve sit on those four thrones, then it will be the end, not only of the White Witch's reign, but of her life. And that's why we had to be so cautious as we came along, for if she knew about you four, your lives wouldn't be worth a shake of my whiskers. All of the children had been attending so hard on what Mr. Beaver was telling them that they had noticed nothing else for a long time. And then during the moment of silence that followed his last remark, Lucy suddenly said, I say, where's Edmund? Then there was a dreadful pause and everybody began asking, who saw him last? How long has he been missing? Is he outside? And then all rushed to the door to look out. The snow was falling thickly and steadily green ice of the pool had vanished under a thick white blanket. And from where the little house stood in the center of the dam, you could hardly see either bank. Out they went, plunging well over their ankles into the soft new snow, and went around the house in every direction. Edmund! Edmund! They called out until they were hoarse, but the silently falling snow seemed to muffle their voices and there was not even an echo. Oh, how perfectly dreadful, said Susan, as they at last came back in despair. Oh, how I wished I'd never come. What on earth are we to do, Mr. Beaver, said Peter. Do, said Beaver, who was already putting on his snow boots. Do, we must be off at once. We haven't a moment to spare. We better divide into four search parties, said Peter, and all go different directions. Whoever finds him must come back here at once. Search parties, son of Adam, said Mr. Beaver. What for? Why, to look for Edmund, of course. Well, there's no point of looking for him, said Mr. Beaver. What do you mean, said Susan? 
He can't be far away yet, and we've got to go find him. What do you mean there's no use looking for him? The reason there's no use, said Mr. Beaver, is that we already know where he's gone. Everyone stared in amazement. Don't you understand, said Mr. Beaver? He's gone to her, to the White Witch, and he's betrayed us all. Oh, surely, oh, really, said Susan, he can't have done that. Couldn't he, said Mr. Beaver, looking very hard at the three children, and everything they wanted to say died on their lips, for each felt suddenly quite certain inside that this is exactly what Edwin had done. But will he know the way, said Peter? Has he been to this country before, asked Mr. Beaver? Has he ever been here alone? Yes said Lucy, almost in a whisper. I'm afraid he has. And did he tell you what he'd done or who'd he met? Well, no, he didn't, said Lucy. Then mark my words, said Mr. Beaver. He has already met the White Witch and joined her side and been told where she lives. I didn't like to mention it before, he being your brother and all. But the moment I set eyes on that brother of yours, I said to myself, treacherous. He had the look of one who had been with the witch and has eaten her food. You can always tell them if you've lived long in Narnia, something about their eyes. All the same, said Peter, in a rather choking sort of voice, we'll still have to go look for him. He is our brother after all, even if he is a little beast and he's only a kid. Go to the witch's house, said Mrs. Beaver. Don't you see that the only chance of saving either him or yourselves is to keep away from her? How do you mean, said Lucy? Why, all she wants is to get all four of you. She's thinking about those four thrones at Care Paravel. Once you were all four inside her house, her job would be done, and there'd be four new statues in her collection before you'd have time to speak. But she'll keep him alive as long as he's the only one she's got, because she wants to use him as a decoy, as bait against the rest of you. Oh, can no one help us? Well, Lucy, only Aslan, said Mr. Beaver. We must go and meet him. That's our only chance now. It seems to me, my dearies, said Mrs. Beaver, that it's very important for us to know just when he slipped away. How much he can tell her depends on how much he heard. For instance, had we started talking about Aslan before he left? If not, then we may do very well, for she won't know that Aslan is coming to Narnia or that we are meeting him and will be quite off her guard as far as that is concerned. I don't remember his being here when we were talking about Aslan, began Peter, but Lucy interrupted him. Oh, yes, he was, she said miserably. Don't you remember? It was he who asked whether the witch could turn Aslan into stone too. And so he did, said Peter. And it's just the sort of thing he would say too. Worse and worse, said Mr. Beaver. And the next thing is this. Was he still here when I told you the place for meeting Aslan was the stone table? And of course, nobody knew the answer to this, because if it was, continued Mr. Beaver, then she'll simply sludge down there in the direction and get between us and the stone table and catch us on our way down. In fact, we will be cut off from Aslan. Well, but that isn't what she'll do first, said Mrs. Beaver. Not if I know her. The moment that Edmund tells her that we're all here, she'll set out to catch us this very night. And if he's been gone for about a half hour, then we have about another 20 minutes. Ooh, you're right, Mrs. Beaver, said her husband. We must all get away from here. There's not another moment to lose. Tune in next time for chapter nine, where we'll find out what happened to Edmund. Mm -hmm.